It is the city, a city that never dies, although some of its inhabitants need that day daily. The city lives and breathes day and night, dark alike. In contrast to the city downtown with skyscrapers, arenas, and casinos, the northern neighborhoods are like a sea of identical blocks attached to a grid of protected lines. Suburbanites pass through the city into its downtown and return to their perfect house. This image from high above suggests a pattern of order that is betrayed by the chaos found below where uncertainty is the only certainty and chaos the only order. This chaos is reverently referred to with pride by its indigenous population as the exquisite. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, where was that going, right? <laughs> Can you do my book up? I know. Okay. My name is John Winston. John Darrell Winston. I'm still getting used to using three names. That is my whole name, and, it, it, and I just started using that when I started writing in the novel form. Because if you Google John, John Winston, you're likely to see that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and although I am a borderline tricky, I don't think I favor him. <laughs> He's got a red shirt. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> Or that guy. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm proud of your my name to be associated with his, and we have the same birthday. Ooh, wow. cool. Weird. All right. So now that I'm John Darrell Winston, the only, only people that pop up are me and my son. Aw. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to do is, by the way, I heard um, Philippa talking about, Philippa, is that how you say her name? I think so. Yeah, she talked about support. These are my two novels. They're out there. This, they are. Um, it's a trilogy, and this is the first one, book one. This is the second one, book two. Um, I had the picture on that. I particularly like the back of the second cover. Oh, great. oh that's oh, very cool. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> so she talked about in, in the university that, that I attend. We talk about author citizenship, and as a community of authors, we talk about um, different levels of supporting authors buying their books, reading their books, reviewing their books, um, mm -hmm. putting their books out there, but not just as a, just to do it, if it's something you're interested in. I mean, if you don't read YA, Little Gray, then it might not, or, or subtle science fiction is what I like to call it, it may not interest you. Because you don't want to, one of the things you don't want to do is review, a, is write, read a book, and you think it sucks, and it might really suck. <laughs> and, and then the person you know, they're waiting on a four or five star review. And if you do that, you, you tend to lose your credibility, you know, in, in, in a marketplace. So, one thing I want to do is, I also hear people, I was asking Paul, he asked me about my writing, and I said, I haven't written a word for like months, and that's bad for a writer, because I'm just doing so much. And so what I, I want to do a little pre-write, that I'm going to do too, because I, I, it's the first time I've written in a while. And first I want to give you a little an, 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 anecdote about something that happened to my daughter. And so it will lead into the pre-write. I, I was doing a Kickstarter about three weeks ago. And I never, somebody said, because I'm doing a, what's called an adopt and author program in Detroit to help kids with reading and writing. And so I, and somebody said, do a Kickstarter program. Do a Kickstarter. I hadn't even heard of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK, yeah, you, you put it on. You do it, and people give you money. Is that easy? Yeah, OK. So, <laughs> so I said, I'm going to do a Kickstarter. So I did a little research. Not enough. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I, you know, a person said, yeah, just ask for 10 grand, I'll give it to you. Uh, uh, so I said, oh, oh really? Uh, where have I been? Exactly. So I did my little research, I did the Kickstarter, and after I exhausted my short list of friends, um, my colleagues, my family, you know, and after about, and, he, and I did it for 30 days, I just, they said 30 days. You know, there's like eight days left, and, and uh, I barely, I didn't have 2,000. So I was like, and I'm this person who's like, believes. I just kind of, you know, I'm faking it until I make it. So I'm going to believe in myself. So I'm thinking, what can I do? I'm, I, you know, you heard that thing where if you, if you want to make God laugh, tell him, tell him the plan, right? So <laughs> I'm just trying to figure this thing out, and I'm working so hard. So I came up with this idea for my daughter Marquette. 
who you will meet somewhat in my next, if you come to my poetry and lyrics. And she's a 14 year old in the old soul. And I said, look, Mark, I have an idea. You're gonna, we're gonna use mutual meditation thing. We're gonna visualize the end. We're gonna, together. I said, what's, what's your favorite restaurant? She said, Oldest Kitchen. I don't know if they have that anywhere in Detroit. There's a place called Oldest Kitchen in Michigan. And um, she said, oh, oh. I said, okay, when we, we're gonna celebrate. I want you, we've got eight days to this Kickstarter is over. And we're gonna, and what we're gonna visualize, you and I, for two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening, celebrating our fully funded Kickstarter. She was like, she's getting freaked. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> said, so, so we're going to August with, with you, me and you and my girlfriend down here, and then we're going to see what movie? She said, Batman and Rock. Batman and Super, versus Super. Versus, okay. I said, okay, so we're going to do that. So we did it. And we, and we, I said, make sure that we're talking in the restaurant, really visualize, really see it. So we did it. You know, I know, I know we're feeling kind of silly, you know, but just, you know. In four and a half days, Kickstarter was fun. And I had a football player from Miami Dolphins who came from, he happened to uh, be a, a student of mine in, the, in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, but he came from nowhere. He saw it online, contributed. I had a jazz artist out in California that I used to go to school with, found it. And it just, it just happened. So, call it coincidence or whatever, but, you know, everything I write about in my books, and I think I'll probably always write about, has to deal with the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. So, you guys met people last night. That was great. <laughs> That was great. I try to remember names, but it's just so hard, right? Snorty. <laughs> so you met people, and you're here with expectations, whether it's to land an agent, whether it's to, for your editor to return your work finished, whatever it is you're trying to, you, you want something to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just focus, meditate for one minute, then we're gonna write for three minutes. And we're gonna write. And when you write, write, write some summary, write some scene, write some dialogue, write whatever. But write, but make it a week from now. Make it doable. Don't say, don't visualize that ten million dollar book deal. All right, something that you really, truly. But I'm so close. You know, something you really, truly will believe in a couple of days. That will happen. And then the whole point of it is to get some pre-writing. But the, also the point is is to understand. I'm thinking there's something with the power of mind. And if we're all in this room, community of writers, I'm thinking maybe that's something. There's something more with the power of more minds together. So. This is such a cool thing. It has a time. I don't know if it's my Mac or their system, but it just kicked in. So starting now, close your eyes if you're comfortable. One minute, focus on something, somebody you've met. Focus on the outcome a week from now, four days from now. Something you want to happen out of this conference. Go.
you, if you break a rule in a novel, you have a lot of reasons to just stop reading it. If they think one thing, and all of a sudden, this guy can fly, and they said nobody could fly, that's a bad deal. Entertain. How about the floating mountains of Pandora? That's world building. What is that? Anybody watch Avatar? Yeah, oh, floating mountains of Pandora is like, they just, you go, ooh, ah, the people in the movie go, ooh, ah, right? Entertain. Gives information. Very big. Okay, so we have, you should do a little world building on your, in your opening line. Now people want you to do, I know agents want you to do everything on your opening line, right? <laughs> right? You, you know, you know, I, you know everything. But if you read some really like popular books, they do a lot on their first line. And the thing that I read to you before, um, that I recited when you came in here, right? Those were the first words that I ever wrote as a novelist. And they're the, they were the first words of my first novel. And my kids were like, what are you talking about, coach? And, and so I got it. And I, it's still in my novel, but it's moved back. Because, you know, and I guess year, years ago, if you read like Moby Dick, anybody, has anybody read Moby Dick? Oh, my goodness. You got to get past, and a lot of older novels, you got to get past, past 10, 12, 20 pages. Right? So. And, and, with, and you can't compete with movies anymore with that. Only, I mean, you just can't. You can't just I'm not reading that. So, anybody want to read, read for me? Because I'm, you know, I've been talking so much. Read, yeah. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Perfect Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. I have no idea. Anybody got any idea what an hour might be? Okay. I think it did very well. <laughs> so, a little bit of world building, set, set, setting can be world building a little bit, but we know it's a neighborhood. We, we got, we're introduced to two characters, and we know that something's wrong with them because they're trying to convince us that they're perfectly normal, and we know about people like that, right? How about this, somebody else, first line? Just take it. When I wake up, the other side of the bed is cold. My fingers stretch out, seeking things warm, but finding only the rough canvas cover of the mattress. Good. Same deal. We, we're oriented. We got a little action. You know, we don't, we, we're, we're introduced to a character. We don't know what's going on, but we're, we're, we're starting to ask questions as opposed to be entertained by pretty pros, right? <coughs> How about this? If anybody can tell me what, who, what this novel is from, I'm going to give you the novel. Ooh, close. Well, you saw the novel, but I'm going to give you this. Did you read it all? I've read through it many times. <laughs> I've watched through his eyes, I've listened through his ears, and I tell you, he's the one. We know it's science fiction. That's what somebody else said in the last class. But it is Ender's Game. Oh. And you read that, too. Like a dozen times. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so a little bit of orientation. This 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 year is, a, is, a, is this this is an incredible novel. Somebody read this. An auditorium is filled with admirers who are anxiously awaiting to hear the cutting edge theories of leading scientist Dr. Cornelius Anderson. Incredible novel. Why not? <laughs> so <laughs> those were the. That's what the beginning changed to. Try to do a little bit of world building. Don't know if I can. Two more. She knows this. Go read it for us. In the week before their departure to Arrakis, when all the final scurrying about had reached a near the unbearable frenzy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy, Paul. Paul! A trade. Is that how you know? Arrakis, we have a place. Is there a place? Arrakis, we don't know that place, so it must be somewhere else, right? You'll never guess what this is from. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even let anybody read it. We're going. <laughs> so there's my universe. That's my universe. I live here. OK? Universe. We talk about the universe to the midi, midi chlorines. What is that? Galaxy. Galaxy. Milky Way. And this is not our solar system. This is somebody else's solar system. I found it. I claimed it. It's mine. OK? The solar system. But if I had a planet, it have to have at least two summits. Ever since I seen, I, I saw this, I have to have two summits. All right. I, and, and again, this is world building in a, in a cinema sense because Luke doesn't say 
Those two sons look beautiful. You just see them. And if you're like me, you go, ooh, ah, right? Move on. So this is actually a solar system that's uh, a star system that's the closest to us, Alpha, Alpha Centauri. Three star, a trinary system. So I've gotten greedy. I want a, I want a three, star, uh, three star system, all right? That's my planet. And it's called Planet Minnetonka, OK? Anybody, can, can anybody guess where maybe I got that name from? Man. I'll give you a hint. It's a lake in Minnesota. Oh my goodness, you win. You, yep, that's it, Purple Rain, Lake Minnetonka. But that's my planet, Minnetonka. Isn't it pretty? Going on. That's, I, and I have to have two moons on my planet, too. Okay? I'm greedy with satellites. Two moons. The Vulcan has three moons. See? <laughs> All right, now, so what does this have to do with the story? So if, if we know that our planet has two moons, what does what is, what is our moon do to our planet? Hmm? Tides. Tides. So something's going to be different. These little things affect your story, okay? And we, as you'll see, you go on, you do something, you've you got different gravity. I always said to myself, you know, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, speculative fiction by definition is geared toward an audience that wants strangers, an audience that wants to spend time in worlds that are not like the world around them. The intrinsic difference between speculative fiction and real world fiction is that Speculative fiction must take place in an unknown, in an unknown world. What's the difference between fantasy and sci fi? Anybody want to go for it? Normally, I would say sci fi follows the rules of physics. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty close. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, what is Iron Man? Fantasy. It, would you say, you say fantasy? <laughs> what would you say? I'd say science. Oh, we got an argument. <laughs> Conflict. <laughs> Conflict. <laughs> All right, look. Well, we go on. My little definition is if a story is set in a universe that follows the same rules as ours, it's science fiction. If it's set in a universe that doesn't follow it, it's fantasy. That's just mine. More succinctly, if one of your characters does some magic impossible thing by rubbing a tree, it's fantasy. If they do the same thing by pushing a button or a button or getting into a machine, it's science fiction. That's how I see it. But they cross. And from my perspective, like I see, I see. It's no offense, but I see Iron Man 2 like science fiction, but I see Thor as fantasy. And they're the same story. So they, they're, they overlap, right? Why? I heard something. That came from the <laughs> Why do you see the same as, as different when uh, the, uh, they almost operate in the same way? Uh, I Thor, Thor and, yeah. yes. Do they? No, Thor is no. magic. Thor is magic. Yeah, everything that, this is how it works, because everything that Tony Stark does, I love superhero stuff. We're not going to finish our thing, but <laughs> Tony Stark is, 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 a, is a genius. And everything he does is, is yeah, he, he's just smart. He fixes this. But Thor is calling upon magic. See, magic. It's, it's generally magic, right? Harry Potter magic, that's definitely fantasy. That's, that's the way I see it. But again, at the end of the day, fantasy is what the, is what your the people in the stores would decide you are selling fantasy. They say it's fantasy, it's fantasy, and vice versa. And same with science fiction, it crosses. So, if you're doing, I'm gonna blow through this so we can build our world. So, if you're if you're on planet Minnetonka, if you're writing a story, sci-fi or fantasy, it has to have a human element, or people won't want to read it, right? If there were no humanoids in Star Wars. Nobody would watch them, right? They're not from Earth, per se, but they look like us, and they speak our language. I remember when I first saw uh, uh, Avatar, the Avatar, the Avatar, I was like, not interested. Because I was like, it's just blue, blue creature. <laughs> like, you know, <clears throat> blue creature, but when they were associated with humans, it was like, oh, man, this is going to be really good. So, if my, on my planet of Minnetonka, how did we get there? You just can't write a story, you're on a planet. You gotta have space flight, space travel. How do we get there? Hyperspace? All right. I mean, you, you need to think about these things. You'll, you'll see why hyperspace. According to Einstein's theory, 
We can't go past the light, right? If you know Einstein's theory. Unless we go into a different dimension and pop out closer to, to the star we're going. That's how we achieve getting to a planet that's light years away in a little time. <coughs> or we use generation shifts. For example, Minnetonka is, my planet, Minnetonka is 10 light years away from Earth, all right? And in my story, we can't, we're, we're gonna respect Einstein's theory and say we can't get close, we can only get 10% of the speed of light, which is still booking, all right? 10% of the speed of light. So I did, these numbers are easy for us, right? 10% of the speed of light, 10 light years to get there. It's gonna take us 100 years to get there, okay? Generation shifts. That means everybody that left Earth, they're not gonna make it, right? So, so the people that arrived on Minnetonka, they were probably born on that ship from people who also died, okay? So you're gonna have a whole different civilization. Back on Earth, people are dead. New laws, country, country, wars have been fought, and we're on a new planet 100 years later. So that, that doesn't even answer. So that's, that's part of your story. If you got there in two years, and you can contact the home planet, that's a different story. That's how it affects your story. If it takes you 200 years through cryo travel, boom, everybody, everybody's familiar with cryo travel, they put you to sleep and freeze you, or one of those gimmicks, right? Another spin on cryo travel is we have a robot ship, and we have embryos. When the planet, when the ship gets close enough, it activates the, just you can come up with all kinds of stuff. The point is that you have to build this before you start writing your story. Warp speed, something made famous by Star Trek, but not so much respected by really sci-fi heads because it kind of disrespects the speed that Einstein's theory, it just says, you know, if you bend time in front and in the back of the ship, you can go to speed up and faster. Yes, I'm sorry, no. Yes, wormholes, wormholes are a kind of a thing like hyperspace. You go in through wormholes. Oh, uh, they're, they're, they're becoming real, almost real, or they're, they're really looking, looking to that. Now, see, she reads your book. It better be right, because she knows your stuff. And she, and she, I'm serious. You'll have people who will read your book. And I, you know, I made a mistake. I, 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 I was a really good chess player, and I did an illegal move. And somebody caught it in, in, in my um, advanced reader copy. And I corrected it, but he still in, in review. He was like, "This guy sucks," you know. So you gotta be, you gotta make sure that you're on point with what you write. Time travel. This is my daughter's favorite. She bugging, you know. She's caught up in the time travel. Damn. What if you went back in the past and like, just whatever. So you gotta have rules for past. Can you come back? Can you change the future if you go back? Can you be seen? Maybe you. Anybody remember the series Final Week? Yeah. <laughs> and he was he uh, would go on somebody else's body, right? During his lifetime or something. How about can you remember if you stay or go back? Time, travel, future. Can you remember in the future if you go there? Or you just get dropped and you don't know what they did? Maybe there's people here who have amnesia, really came from the past. Yeah. How about you can only inhabit another's body? That's what we talked about in how about this? You have a time limit or you will fill in the blank. Right? How about does a version of you stay in the past? It can get pretty, you can just you can come up with so many different things with time travel is ridiculous. For the planet particulars. Oh, this is getting too egghead, right? Gravity. Earth is 9.79, right? So if you're on a planet that has 20, now you're, I can't do the math here, but you might be twice as heavy. Depends. Or if you're on a planet that has that, you're lighter. So if a species on Minnetonka, uh, or what is it, a uh, indigenous species to Minnetonka, and humans are there, how has their how has their gravity changed? Uh, days. What if you got a 10, 10 hour day on the planet instead of a 24 hour? What if the planet doesn't stand at all? What if half of the planet is dark always, the other half is light? Now, how, how will that, how will uh, life forms on that planet evolve? Right? You gotta think about that. Year, what's the year? This is a good one, I love this one. How is the atmosphere different from Earth? Okay, they, they dealt with this again in Avatar. You had to wear a mask, humans did, or 
20 sec 30 seconds off, you're, you're uh, pass out, 30 more seconds, you're dead. What I liked about, when you talk about world building, I remember growing up watching the Superman, telling my age again, watching the Superman with Chris, Chris Reed. Anybody remember that Superman? Yeah. When he would take three steps and jump out the window, that was his life. And you, I don't remember like the origin. I just remember this guy that could do super things. And I wasn't, I was like, that's, that's okay. But when I saw Superman in the movie, I was like, wow, he comes from print time. I didn't know he was an alien. And he could do all those things, right? And this is why. So now it had a different thing to me. And then they upped the Annie and Man of Steel because now they have to adjust. Their atmosphere is different. They just didn't come to the planet. Superman had to adjust. They don't breathe the same air, right? You ask yourself, what if, if the if the Pandorians and Avatar came to Earth, how would they deal with Earth's atmosphere? So think about those things when you're building your world. I I put this on here for no particular reason except that I like to do bicycles. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? All right, pass that. Okay. Now we're now we're back home and we're in our solar system. See the nice little solar flare that I have a solar flare. Teaching this class, I learned something. I forgot to put dogs in my story. And that's world building. I mean, how, can you go a week without seeing a dog? You, you know, I mean, if you go, especially in the summertime, you see dogs, right? And you, you'll forget that. That's world building. Where are your animals? Right? You got to have, and I don't have a dog in my story. I got to go back, right? Put a dog and I got a parent. I don't have a dog. Cats, too. I'm sorry. You gotta have, not on Earth. We're on Earth. Earth, are we on Earth, past, present, or future? Figure it out. It's up to you. If you're in the past, how far back? Are there continents? Is it Pangea? Is it like one big continent all squished together? The present, which dimension? Ooh. Alternate or current? Are we in Gotham? The future, how far will you create a map? Like in Mary Lou's legend, you know, she has a map. Uh, Suzanne Collins has a map for Hunger Games, you know, and it's kind of important. I know when I'm reading future books and they're talking about the Earth, I'm like, where is this? You know, and when I see a map, oh, when they were talking about the dish, talking about the districts in Hunger Games, I'm like, oh, the agriculture, what's that? I get it, you know. So those kind of things. And some readers really, you want to write, you want your, you want your writing to be rich. Um, I dream about my settings. I dream about my characters because I live with them. I don't. You got, you got writers who just cookie cut. Here's the, here's the format. And if you, and a lot of those characters will be flat. A lot of those stories will be flat. But if you're living in your setting, if you're living in your world, if you're dreaming about it, if you know those characters, the gentleman yesterday was talking about funny. How do you be funny? Well, funny is hard. Most people aren't funny, even though they think they are. And, and humor occurs just, you, know, you have some select comedians who are always funny. It's not their jokes, they're funny. I can say the same joke, and you funny can say it, and, it's, and she's funny, because she's funny, all right? And I'm not funny, all right? So that's important in the world, really. infrastructure. How and what do people, people consume? My daughter said, she had the weirdest question when we came back from Star Wars. She said, Dad, why don't people ever go to the bathroom in Star Wars? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Don't include that. You try to get naked in Forms Wallace on the Stormtroopers. Exactly. How do you, what, the, the Stormtroopers, they have. You know, there's, it's a true story. Um, Alex Creed, he played the, the, the war queen. They had it take so much time. Of course, you couldn't get a bathroom in that suit. Mm. Something to think about. How do people travel? You know what? Hover cars? Feet? Uh, how about uh, teleporters? Whatever. you got to come up with it. The rules. What do people live in? Floating houses? Holes? Hobbit holes? What? Um, it, is there currency? Jobs? Careers? Those kind of things. You watch... If you watch a... I, obviously, I'm a Star Wars fanatic. If you watch a um, George Lucas film, there are things going on over there 
and it's not even, it's, you know, it's, I mean, there's something going on over there and over there on the screen and over there, and it's this huge city, and that's world building in cinema. And, it, and for most people, they're just watching the dialogue, and they're like, yeah, whatever. But a lot, there are some people who really look at that stuff and invent the past. Evolution. What is, evo what is your evolution? If you've created an alternate uh, Earth, what's the evolution? Maybe we're not. Remember Planet of the Apes? Maybe we're not uh, the dominant species. What's the evolution? Important. Maybe there's more than one type of human that. that uh, what is the history? After you got your evolution, what's the history? That's not evolution. That's uh, what wars and what societies have emerged and how did they get there? You're like, all this to write a story. Biographies, a little different than backstory. A little different than backstory. Biographies. Um, my biography is that I went to this school, I went to that school, I was in the army, blah, blah, blah. But my story is, you know, I want to be the best. I want to sell a balloon across the globe. And I've been, and, and I've been obsessed with balloons my whole life. And this, I'm just making this up. And so that's where my backstory is. But my biography is that I went to Wayne State. And you need those things, because again, it's nice to know where something about your character. And if you know about your character, you know your character can't be funny, because he spent his whole life in academia. Or maybe something, you know, if you know that, then you won't try to make your character funny, uh, brilliant, sexy. Because everybody can't be all, maybe, well, some people can be all things. But you, you limit your character. Your character will have limitations. Languages. If you're writing, if we're writing a book in America, in the United States, we're writing English, but that doesn't mean your characters speak English. And you need to establish that. One of the things you want to be careful about is, and I've read novels like this, and I speak to people who read novels like this, whereas you, you've got really complex with tools or language, and then you have a glossary or something where you say, this equivocal means a knife. And I'll just close the book, because if I gotta keep going back to the you know, I can use context some of the time, but you want to be careful. To me, George, I go back to George Lucas. I, I don't have to guess what a blaster is. All right? If something breaks down in the Star Wars world, it's always a bad moment. Okay? So keep, keep stuff like that simple. Because it's, it's kind of irrelevant. You know, whatever they're fixing, it's a bad moment. Groups, ethnic groups. What's your primary culture? What's your secondary culture? Conflict, right? Conflict. Animal life, see? Gotta have some dogs in the story. Not just dogs. How about flora? How about plant life? Think about Hunger Games again. You got the Jabber, what do you call them? The Mocking Jays? And then you got the, the, the Nightlock, things like that. Makes your world real. Primary, primary culture government. Is it a republic? Is it a monarchy? Aristocracy, it's a hard word for me to say. And or is it di dictatorship? Sense of place. We're getting closer. Again, you start, it's just like a movie. When, and when I went to film school, we do an establishing shot. And then the story happens in close. We're getting close now. Sense of place. This is where the story occurred, right? Families and structures. How about sports? Quidditch. Music. You know, the little canteen at the start, and the Star Wars thing, entertainment. You know, all this makes your story. Entertain I'm big with entertainment, obviously. And I think most novels lack music. They lack music. And have you ever went to see a film? How often do you go to see a film and there's no music? You know, they, you hear music. We, we, as human beings, we hear music, okay? You don't think you do, but you hear music right now. You just don't realize it. Okay, you guys think I'm crazy, right? Neighborhoods, where's the bars, gyms, spaceports? Where's, where's this going to occur? Communities, religion, you know? Magic, this is a tough one for me because, you know, I'm just not, so much not a magic guy. Magic, what are the rules for magic? But it's, it's hugely important. Why, and you know, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, I've read the books, but why in Harry Potter can't they fix brooms, but they can fix bones? See, that's a question that some people might ask. The broom breaks and they throw it away. But here, his bones go and they can throw it, give him some magic and he fix it. But these are rules. How do you use it? 
What are the restrictions? What exactly does it do? And he, it's important because you can't have God as your protagonist because if you put God up in the tree, he can come down no matter what you throw at him, whenever he wants to. You have to have, the more rules you have in your world building, the better story you can have, right? The better story because now you got rules. Now he can't do this. Oh my goodness, conflict. He can't do this. Oh my goodness, conflict. That's where world building comes in. How does it relate to the story the magic does? What is the cost, the price? Anybody familiar with the series Once? Rumble Silskin? No? Man. Okay. How long does it last? Well, everything has limits, right? Who can and cannot use it? Everybody can use it. This is my favorite. Superpower. I'm a, super, I'm a superhero guy. So my story is a hero story. And what's, his, what's the power? What is the power? Right? You got flashlight hands. What is his power? What is the power's limitations? Kryptonite. Got to have limitations. How does society cope? The last two are huge for me. How does society cope with the powers? I, I have a problem with when, when Superman comes out for the first time and does his thing. You <coughs> kind of look at him and say, wow. I mean, ask yourself, if I'm sit, sitting at the bar with, what's your name? If I'm sitting at the bar with Ron, and Ron makes this drink disappear like that, and, and I'm the only one that sees it. No, I probably had too much to drink. But if I didn't, and I said, and he says, yeah, I'm, I, I have the disability powers. And, and he said, but if you tell anybody, I'm going to kill you. Now, when I get home, I'm, I'm never going to forget this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell everybody. And hope Ron doesn't come back and make me disappear. But what is the, how does society cope with the powers? That's big. That's conflict. You know, you see somebody do something. Have you ever seen anybody do anything? That's super powerful. Ask yourself when you're writing, when somebody does magic, what does the human who's never seen magic do? Right? Here's another one. What is the origin of the power? You. you just don't have somebody come on the scene and they can deflect bullets. How? Why? Right? Because you, you're, what you're trying to do is, for me, is expand on the people you're, you want to bring in everybody. You want your story to be rich. Some people will just come and say, and take everything you say at face value. Yes, the guy can deflect bullets, I don't care where he came from, and he can fly, and they don't care. But there are a lot of people who want to know, they want a story. Put it all in there. Um, compare and contrast with humans, all right? Big, five senses. We do that, we watch the movie. Ooh, I wish I could fly. Five senses, Ooh, I wish I could see. I don't know I should say that. Wish I could, uh, whatever. <laughs> Behavior, emotion. Eat, sleep, sex, procreate. We can pass sex. And lifespan. What's the cool with lifespan? What's the lifespan? I, I wonder that you think about lifespan. If you do this early, think about Star Trek. Spock has it. His lifespan is twice that of human. Right? If you didn't know what it is. Which is why he was able to be in the in, in the Picards. Because he can live, he would live twice as long as Kirk. Kirk has been gone. I don't know that Gene Roddenberry had planned to put, him, to put him in a new series 40 years ago, I mean 40 years ago, but that world building opened up those options. So I got to stay around. Leonard Nimoy, may he rest in peace. So that's, that's world building. We're going to do an exercise. We're going to build a world. Let me ask you a question. Shoot. When you, when you build your world, do you make a map of in your head or Orson, I, I make a map, okay, because I'm a huge fan and of that's, Orson. Yeah, that's what I did, because I'm more visual. Are you? On, on your, um, in this, take this with you, because the size of it, that gives a lot of work. Um, <laughs> on the back of it, I, I'm an information hound. I'm giving you my spin on a lot of this, but I, I'm also an information hound, and there are resources for world building. The first 10 down are websites, the last two are books. And the one in particular that I love by Orson Scott Carr, I'm a big Orson Scott Carr fan. And this is an older book, but it's still in print. It has a really great section on world building. And um, I mean, you, you, you know, great writers, you kind of adopt somebody. You know, I'm a big Stephen King, Orson Scott Carr fan. And so he draws maps. So I draw maps, okay? And 
Stephen King says, take 10% out of your work for Eddie. I take 10% out of my work. You know? I think it's important because you, you got to know where your characters are going. Yes. You can't have them turn south if they're uh, right. or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know? If you set the rules, if you if you set the parameters, then you, if you especially if you character, I believe in kind of character driven work more so than plot based. Now you, you have it all together. So I'm going to, um, so this is the group. One, two, three. So you guys are doing space travel. Come on, now you can use a workshop. Let me see. You two. Easy stuff. You guys are um, We're also, uh, here we got government, community. Just find something really quick. Remember, just, just an exercise. You three. How about infrastructure? How do people eat? That's the top. Magic. Magic it is. Superpowers. Superpowers. And you guys? Prepare and contrast. Anything. Just exercise. Yeah, 
That's a good idea. For somebody else. All right, one minute. All right, guys. I don't, I don't want to be the one who holds everybody up. Just give me one or two of yours. I didn't. I didn't match my. Mind. Give me one or two. Oh, so ours was space travel, um, and we said that there wasn't going to be a ship at all. We were going to have a group of people that could have portal to anywhere. Oh, so we so no time.
force your heart and nutter and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on, and there's nothing in you except the will that says to them, hold on. If you can talk with Christ and keep your virtue, or walk with kings in order to use the kindly touch, if neither foes or nothing, uh, but neither foes or loving friends can hurt you, but all men count if you've done too much. If you can feel the unforgiving minute, 60 seconds worth of distance from you, then yours is the earth and everything is in it. And which more, you'll be a man, my son. Thank you.